Oh hey, if you like cash and you like color, you might like today's episode. Okay, you are free to go. Don't block my shot, please. Welcome back to another episode of Laugh Cry DIY. I am your girl, Katie, and today we are doing my absolute favorite thing. We are taking boring thrift store finds and we are turning them into exciting, very fun, colorful, maximalist decor. Because today I am participating in the Makeover May Challenge hosted by Brandy over at the DIY Struggle in which I am joining other DIY creators for the month of May to make over thrift store finds and most importantly, to give away $100 to one very special viewer. But for now, let's meet today's very exciting, very sexy, very fun and flirty thrift store contestants. First up, we have Lisa the Lamp. I scored her at the thrift store. I love her. I love that she's very tiny. And you guys may or may not have noticed that like small lamps in unexpected places are very popular right now. Throw one on your kitchen counter, even put one in your bathroom. I especially love that she's like so petite and cute. But Lisa has one really sad problem. Lisa is very basic. She has no color, no fun, no personality. And so we are going to change that for her. Up next we have Tina the tray. She is a very fun, sizable wood tray. She has this little tropical um, pattern on the inside, but I have a vision to take her from boring tropical tourist to sophisticated resident. Guys, not every metaphor is gonna work. And lastly, we have Patricia the planter. Now, when I found her in a thrift store, I polled people on my Instagram and asked if I should buy her, and many people said no. But I'm simply gonna say that's because you guys couldn't see the vision here. She is actually an $89 West Elm planter, but as we can tell, she's been through some rough relationships, she had a record contract, she lost it, and now she is partially broken. But today, we are gonna heal her and turn her into the beautiful, stunning diva she always was. All right, let's do it. So, for Little Miss Lisa the Lamp, we are going to really turn it up on her lampshade and we're gonna add a little bit of color to her base. Lately, I have been very obsessed with the very bold, colorful lampshades of House of Hackney or Emma Shipley. So we're gonna turn her into like a funky floral little moment. And step one, we're gonna start with a really bold base in the form of yellow. Now to start, I'm actually going to change two pieces on her base. We're gonna hit this bottom little ceramic area that's gonna be yellow, and I'm also just gonna change her little silver uh, like neck to gold just because I want to. All right, now that she has her little shower cap and her robe on, she is ready to get her highlights. Lighting is terrible. Alrighty, here we have a beautiful little sunny yellow lampshade. And I was very inspired by this. This is actually a piece of vintage wallpaper that I have. And it has a really cool pattern. And the easiest thing to do if you wanna recover a lampshade is to actually just like mod podge some wallpaper on it. Um, and I considered doing that and then painting this, but I thought, eh, let's just mix it up and try to paint it itself. So I'm actually gonna free sketch on some flowers based on this pattern. And unfortunately, I know that this will not really be visible from your guys' perspective, but oh well. Ooh, this is very fun already. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but we have some cute little leaves and flowers and all the things all the way around. And now it is paint time. You guys, this looks so cool. You guys, I'm sorry I'm not getting all of this perfectly on camera, but some beauty just can't be captured. Do you see? Okay, we're gonna let her dry. I might go in and do some extra detail work, but I think overall we are looking pretty colorful and exciting. Now, while we wait for that lovely little lampshade cover to dry, Let's undress our sexy base. Ooh. How cute. How darling. What a cute, fun, little sexy pop of color just for absolute fun. And let's talk about Little Miss Tina the Tray. 
So, um, she is like really good condition. She's, nothing's broken. She's super sturdy. And when I saw her color, it instantly reminded me of a Jonathan Adler piece I'd seen. With this sort of like blue and lavender sort of color blocking thing. A little bit trippy, a little bit 70s, but kind of modern and chic. And so I just wanted to do a very simple base and just color block inside. So to do that, I'm actually gonna start by putting down some lavender contact paper. Guys, this is an experiment. Um, I realize that contact paper on a tray, it might get torn or something. If I like it, I can keep it. If I don't, I can tear it off and do something new with it. So step one, I am just cutting down the size of paper and we're gonna put it in. The easiest thing to do would be to have a wallpaper pattern that you like and then just cut that and put it in and then you won't have to do any of this drama. Also, this contact paper is very thin. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Okay, 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 I think we're good. We're looking smooth. Smoother as we go. Y'all, we are fighting a war against air bubbles and we're winning, but we've lost some soldiers along the way. All right, whew. I'm thrilled to say that that was spectacularly difficult. So we have our beautiful lavender inside and now we are just going to color block by just taping off the interior rectangles. I'm just using, I think this is like one inch painter's tape and then I'm going to remove some pieces and we'll start painting the blocks in. So basically I'm gonna reveal the outside frame. I am cutting and re-taping some versions so that we make sure those corners are nice and clean and crisp. Now, fortunately, I had a shade that is incredibly close to the existing turquoise, so that's what I'm using, and it's just gonna be close enough, you know? And we're dry. And we are going to take this tape off, and then we're gonna work on the next pieces. Let's see here. Ooh, so cool already. I am honestly tempted to leave it as is, but we can't do that. All right, now we're gonna add in a lighter and darker shade. And normally I would go back in and tape, painters tape back over these, but I have to be honest guys, I have painted on contact paper before and it didn't scratch off, but maybe the coating of this one is like not the greatest. So I'm a little worried if I put the painters tape over it, it's gonna rip it off. Does that mean that in general, this is not gonna be the most uh, stable craft? Sure. If I wanted to make it super stable, I would put a sheet of glass over this and then trap the design underneath. But I think what I'm gonna do is kind of try to freehand it, and that's bold, but we're feeling sassy. All right, I think I did that decently, and now it's time for our final peel. Alrighty, I think she's looking good. And now for Miss Patricia the planter. Here's what I love about her. I love that she's like a tall standing planter. I love that she has body yaddy yaddy curves for days. We know she's missing one and we're gonna replace that. And this is actually, I don't know if you guys can see on camera, this is a very pale pink and black. And this is honestly, I think the most colorful item you can actually get at West Elm. But it is not quite colorful enough for me. But this is a perfect example of something you see at the thrift store. It got donated because it's broken, but with a little DIY, we can easily rehab her and turn her into something that we super love. Now we're gonna use air dry clay to make a new little curve for her. And FYI, this is also something if you had a normal boring straight base, you could use air dry clay to make a bunch of these and glue them on and all that stuff and it would be very cool. So we are just going to shape a simple little hip for her. That's what I'm gonna call it, hip bone, I don't know. And not only are we gonna shape this, I am perfectly going to imprint the base along where she's like awkwardly missing so that we can glue it and it will actually like fit in nicely. I'm just kind of freehanding this and shaping as we go. Psych, I already did it. I already created a perfectly shaped one. She's dry, she's beautiful, and she's sanded down. I'm so proud, look, look at that. Full disclosure, usually I use air dry clay. I got air dry modeling clay, which took like four days to dry. So I would highly recommend using air dry clay, which dries much quicker. 
And to attach this, I'm just using Gorilla Hot Glue, which to me is the absolute best hot glue. It has a very firm grip. I feel like it grips onto everything. 10 out of 10, we love it. Ooh. Okay, so she has already dried and I'm just taking some joint compound, which if you don't know, it's basically like super duper spackle. And I'm just gonna hit the seams here um, where there's a little bit of gapping or anything like that just to make sure that we have a really nice smooth uh, seal and it kind of blends in with everything else. And you can kind of go back with like a damp rag and wipe off anything that like doesn't need to be there, you know? And we're back and she is dry. And we are just gonna hit her with some really fine grain sandpaper just to even up any things that are still rough, but it's looking fairly seamless and I'm really happy, especially with the shape. It, um, I think it's, it works. And don't forget the back and don't forget the sides. And we're wiping and we're taping because we're gonna be painting. All right, now I normally wouldn't do this, but we are gonna be painting these and I wanna make sure that the paint color kind of looks normal and consistent across all of them. So I am just gonna paint this one in black just to match, um, just so that if the other colors bleed through in a weird way, then this one will too. <gasps> Guys, look, it's not half bad. All right, now we are going to be changing the colors up on these and I'm gonna keep the light pink color because I think that's fun, but, but I wanted to add in something more bold to really kind of call out her little like curves. And one theme I always love and something that this reminded me of was a little bit of like a peacock's eye. Peacock feather. So we're gonna do a lightly inspired pattern here and we're also gonna be painting the inside of the drum. This is ceramic, this is kind of terracotta so it's gritty and it can hold on to paint, but this is ceramic. So I'm actually gonna hit this with some of Miss Lillian's original Swamp Mud, which is a very sticky base coat for paint. So I have cut these small little templates, um, which I'm gonna trace in, and it'll be like arch, 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 if that makes sense. See? Cute. And we got all the arches. So we have a dark blue, a medium blue, and then a yellow in the middle for the gold. You know, I just realized that last year I did this challenge and I did my peacock chair. So I guess it's really a theme in my heart at all times. Now folks, I did just realize something dumb. We are painting on black and yellow can be a very sheer, sheer color. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry, but I'm actually gonna go back over this with white and that'll make it more opaque and kind of like pop a little bit more. We are gonna go in with this gorgeous, gorgeous peacock blue, which is actually called Custom Color Match. <laughs> Tight. Love to paint away from the camera. <laughs> All right, now that these are dry, I am gonna go back over the yellow with this little white base primer. And I really should have known to do this from the beginning, but you live and you learn. All right, while everything is drying, let me tell you about how you can enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Linked below in my description is the Makeover May playlist for 2023. All month long, there's gonna be videos added to that playlist. There's gonna be 11 videos total. You just need to watch every video and each creator is gonna share a code word. Write down all those code words and then at the end of the month, from May 27th to June 1st, head over to the DIY Struggles community page where she's gonna ask you if you have collected all the code words. If you have, simply comment yes. Don't comment the code words. Our code word is baguette. On June 2nd, if you have won, she's gonna respond to your comment and ask you to send her all the code words. I know it's a little complicated, but we have major scammer issues, so we're trying to make the giveaway as fair as possible. All right, back to the crafts. All right, we're looking good. I will be second coating all of this, but I think we're finally ready to add in our very kicky, very fun blue. I have decided that this has gone from peacock to evil eye, but either way, I am fine with that. Now I am feeling kind of sassy and I do want to paint the inside just to give it a little extra accent. I'm gonna do it the dark blue color Ooh la la. And I think you guys are ready for your final reveal right now.
Well, you guys, that concludes today's exciting thrift flip color challenge. Make sure to watch everybody else's videos in the playlist linked below. Every creator is tackling different styles, but they're all very cool, very fun thrift flips. If this is your first time watching my channel, thank you for stopping by. If you guys watch every week, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And if you want more tips, you can sign up for my email list, which is also linked below. And please, I would love to see your guys' thrift flips. You can tag me on social, you can DM me, you can email me, all the links are below. Please let me creep on the things you guys are doing because I love it so much. Okay, love you, see you next week, bye.